Hey YouTube, my name is Kenny. Thank you for checking out my channel. Today's video is going to be all about our 92 Yamaha Banshee. What we're going to be doing in this video is disassembling the motor. I am going to be selling this machine in the future and I want to make sure everything is good. But for those of you who do not know, I have come across two Banshees. One's a 92 and the other one is a 2005. I'm going to take the 92 back down the stock, but I just want to, you know, get it all cleaned up, make sure it's good. So when you're asking good amounts of money for things, it's always best to just go through them and make sure everything's good so people don't have to come pick up something that needs any kind of work done to it. So in this video, what we're gonna do is disassemble the motor, see what kind of quality products and items we have in there, and then we're gonna decide what we put back and where to go from there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of content. So let's go ahead and start getting it broken down. Go ahead. Let's get all these bolts off here. So there's no need to bore you all with disassembling this slow. We're gonna make light work of this with a DeWalt impact driver, but it's only taking a 12 millimeter socket to just remove all those. And we're gonna just get this done really quickly and then focus more on the quality of these items and what we're going to replace these items with. Now the boost bottle is going to go ahead and be thrown in the trash. I have no desire to reuse that, so... Hey! It looked good, actually. I mean, it doesn't look too, too bad, so hopefully we don't really have to do a whole bunch with it. So those pistons do look good. They have STD on them, but we're gonna go ahead and take everything off, see what the rings are gonna look like, make sure that the cylinders look good. And hopefully this is a good sign moving down through the motor. A little scoring or something there, but we'll see. Breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. Then as I said, the pistons do look good, but yet I still have to see what brand they're gonna be because I don't wanna have really a budget build when I'm asking for good money in the future with this. So we're gonna make sure the brand and everything is good. We're gonna try to avoid certain ones that are super cheap. All right, cylinder number one has come off with no problems. But number two was to be a little more challenging. You have a few options. I decided to go ahead and use my rubber mallet, peck on it a little bit to loosen things up, and then work it on up off there. But you also could do the easier way is rotate the crank and pull that piston down a little bit, and then you shouldn't have really any problems getting that off. Once again, I'll say the pistons don't look too bad. So I may be able to use those in the future, but I just have to check the quality. But besides that, we're gonna go ahead and get these cables off there, a few less things, turn the motor over to its side. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the clutch side cover off and see what kind of you know damage and things we're gonna be looking at in there. It's a little hard to get off here, so. Yeah, these are definitely the wrong size bolts. The heads are too big to be able to get any kind of thing but a box end on there. I can say that this is our sign that we're gonna be replacing all of the hardware on the outside of this motor. Some of it is stock and you have to use the Phillips screw head remover to get it off. But some of this right here in this motor is 10 millimeter as well. And you can't even really get the 10 millimeter on there. So one of the simple things to do is just change it all and have it looking a lot better. Be careful if you're going to use a screwdriver to pry these open. Make sure not to dig into your cases because it's going to make it a huge pain to be able to try to seal it back up. But overall, it wasn't really bad. When we do put our gaskets on, I am going to make sure I put some grease on the gaskets to make them easier to come off than the prior ones. But we're just going to get this stripped down.
Overall, I am very impressed. Nothing looks beat up or really bad. The clutches seem to be okay. All the bolts and all the retaining clips seem to be able to be reused. So I'm pretty thrilled with this aspect. Make sure not to lose this circlet. All right, we are pretty much done with getting this off. Bolts on the top, bolts on the bottom are all that's gonna be left to be able to get these case halves opened. And one of the things I do like about the Banshee is that the case halves don't have to be split left and right. They come off top and bottom. So that's a huge plus. We're gonna get the pistons off and that's the last thing holding us back and keeping us from getting this top end, well, getting this bottom end accessible. All right, so here we are. We have a lot done. We did get the motor broken down. Does look pretty good. I didn't find anything bad in there, just some aftermarket stuff. It does have the hot cams crank in there, stock, stroke, and all that. I'm not really sure what the pistons are yet. I'm gonna look those up. And it does have, has the niche cylinders in there. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna see about that. I'm gonna look them up online. I know a lot of bad reviews came from like Athena. And if those were on there, I'd replace them. But I'm going to see what people think about the niche ones. And I'm going to decide then whether I keep them or not. But right here behind us, we do have the motor sitting here. Cases are all open, looking all good. I do have a few parts that I need to switch over to the other side. But in order to clean these new cases up, I did replace the cases. Just because these didn't have any of the chain slap and they weren't broken. But I want them to look a lot fresher. If that's a word. A lot more fresh. And a lot cleaner so i am going to hit them with a light blast and i'm going to coat them with the aluminum powder coat to just make them look nice and fresh i want this whole thing to look clean and we're going to go ahead and get that done so here we are case halves sitting here behind us got them real cleaned up did go ahead and put some powder on them it isn't perfect but it looks a lot better and the reason why i say it's not perfect it's not because the quality of the powder that i use or anything like that is that if you've ever had these cases they have some casting imperfections so they don't look super smooth there's like little knobs and i did not go out of my way and grind and foul all that stuff off there i did just blast it real good and go ahead and coat it so they do look better we're gonna get the camera flipped around and just do a quick comparison all right, so here are the case halves that you did see a little bit ago. The biggest reason why I decided to go with different case halves, as you see, was the chain slap had broke this area here. So with that area being broken, these have no slap on them, as well as up top. And we're gonna go ahead and just switch all the internals over. So we're gonna take these shock towers, these whatever bushings, they're gonna re-go onto the bottom. We're gonna put the drain plug back over there. We're gonna get everything flipped over and we're gonna start switching internals from one side to the other. I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of these little items right here out so we can get this thing continuing. 10 millimeter. I'm gonna get this roller out. Shift star here, we're gonna get those out.
All right, so now we're very close to actually getting these things closed up. So we're gonna go ahead and use some anaerobic gasket maker to get these things done. So we're gonna just pretty much put it over all of our gasket mating surfaces and then I'm going to just touch it up, tack it down with my finger on the top and bottom to make sure I have good promotion, right? So one of the things I did read about this online is that it does seal up and cure when it's out of the presence of air. So it makes it real easy to clean up after you get these cases installed. It's kind of like a grease consistency. All right, now that we've gotten all of our forks back in, it's time to get the transmissions back in. So they all fit in there with absolutely no problem. We are packing the bearings or packing the actual seals before we put that crank back in and we're gonna hope that it doesn't leak. This crank did already have the seal and the primary drive gear already installed, so we're not gonna remove that. And once we do our leak down testing, it's going to let us know if that's something that we're gonna to have to look at in the future or not. So we're gonna go ahead and get the tops down and we're ready to get this closed up. Make sure to just take your time and feed your rods up through there before you get it too far and then seat it all down. Now you do have the, all the hardware that goes in on the top. I believe all the heads were 10 millimeter. I didn't put them in in any particular fashion, but according to the manual, I'm pretty sure that there is an order and I believe that they're numbered. So I'm just seating them all down tightly. And what you wanna do is work from the inside out and then I just snug them up with my hand. The manual is eight foot pounds. All right, everyone, jump skip ahead a little bit. We have the clutch side of the Banshee done, pretty much. We have a couple more things to do. That's why I said pretty much. But we're gonna get the camera around, talk about what we've gotten done, what we're gonna be doing with this cover. And hopefully, we'll be figuring out exactly what we're gonna be doing with the top end. The top end wasn't really a problem. The parts in there that came out looked great. However, I'm not really a big fan of the niche cylinders and those pistons were vetoes. It's kind of not really good quality. So, you know, I don't want that to be a deciding factor when I go to sell this thing. So you're acting, you know, you're acting for asking for good money and I don't want to have a bunch of crap parts. So that's why I did, you know, make sure I went with OEM electronics. So I'm going to try to go with a good quality top end kit so it doesn't deter anybody from buying it. So. Flip the camera around, we're gonna talk about what's going on and get it back. Motors on this stand, and once again, I would have to say thank you to my wife. This is one of the best gifts that I've gotten, but we have everything back in there with no problems. So we put all the shift star, linkage, everything, the kicker is back in there. We didn't take these off. We left them all on there, these, um, the primary drive gears and things like that. The clutches all look great. We put those back in as they came out. We torqued it all down. But one thing I do want to say is I powdered my cases. It looks great. This one here, I dropped it and ended up breaking this area. So I did put that back in there and JB welded it and made sure it was good, smooth and going to have a good seal. So that's not going to be any kind of problem. I just wanted to definitely let that be known. The gasket kit that we're using came from Fast, so it's a good quality gasket kit. We have the water pump assembly and all the other parts that came out of this clutch side cover out. I have sandblasted and everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some black powder coat, get it cleaned up, get it looking pretty new. Then we're gonna just sit it on this side and make sure we enjoy or admire, give us an opportunity to admire all the hard work we're putting in this thing. All right, so I didn't want to bore you all with seeing the powder coating and everything like that, but we got the motor back here on the stand behind us. It's hot, a little sweaty. It was like 97 degrees today, but camera around. We'll talk about this. Get this one closed up. I think I'm going to split this video up into a part two. Uh, basically, I'm going to have to look at a top end because I'm not going to put the other stuff on there for right now. And I got to close the stator side up, which isn't going to be too bad, but let's get the camera around and we'll get this one done. 
All right, 92. Everything stock bolts and whatnot. I just ran them through the wire wheel, the soft wire wheel to just shine them up a little bit. So everything looks good as it should be. This is the regular cover. It's not perfect. It does have like a little scratches here and there, but it cleaned up pretty nice. We powder coated the case cover. I hit it with black and then I clear coated just to give it a little bit of resistance to chemicals. But yeah, well, on this side, we're pretty much done. Everything's good. This spins as it should. Kicker, we're gonna have to get that powder coated and whatnot put on there, but yeah. Motor's coming around looking real good. Top end's gonna be in the next video along with the stator side cover reinstall. All right, everyone, you know the deal. Thank you for checking out this video. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and we'll get with you at the next one.